Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we move ahead to Professor Naveen Nanda Oration. This year, this oration is being conferred on Professor I.B. Vijayalakshmi from Bengaluru and she'll be having 14 minutes for the oration. Ladies and gentlemen, as this is an oration, we'll not be having any questions from the floor. Uh, with these few words, may I invite Professor Naveen Nanda. He'll be joined by Dr. Sumita Chaudhary from United States and uh, along with them would be Drs. Lekha Patak, Samir Srivastav, Chetan Shah, Ajit Mulasheri, S.C. Govind and Amrish Agarwal. to say, uh, I think everybody knows Dr. Nanda, some of them who's, who may not have heard about him, I think he's an unfortunate fellow. <laughs> he's a world-renowned personality in ECHO. He has printed, he has published a large number of books. We had a privilege to go to his center. He has, he has published on Doppler, color flow mapping, transesophageal, 3D ECHO, and now a comprehensive textbook. And I think he has more than 1,000 papers, publication, and very, very prestigious Alice Lilly Award, which is given to ambassadors, to various uh, Nobel Prize winners. That has been given to him by Senate. And I think every country, and in, I don't know, in, I don't I forgot in one country, they have put one day as a Naveen C. Nanda Day in that country. Respected chairpersons and dear colleagues, good afternoon. It's my proud privilege and I'm blessed to uh, give this oration of uh, Professor Naveen C. Nanda. So, Naveen C. Nanda, when you look at him, you know, two Sanskrit shloka I remember. One is Vidya Sarvatra Sadate. And because of his knowledge all over the world, he's recognized. The other one is Vidya Dadati Viniyam. And I think that we youngsters have to learn from Dr. Nanda because tirelessly he's working 2D, 3D, 4D, whatever it is. Sir, you are a guru's guru. And today is a teacher's day. And it is our proud privilege to give a big hand to Dr. Nanda. He's a teacher to the teachers. Acute rheumatic fever and its long-term sequelae, rheumatic heart disease, is still a burning problem in children, adolescents, and young adults in Bharat. And this is so unfortunate that for past 20 years, we have been pleading to include the ECHO criteria in the zones criteria. And in the den of the thing, Minnesota, when I presented my data to include the uh, zones criteria, that time, Ed Kaplan, who was in the zones criteria, and also uh, Patricia Ferreri, who was a chairman of zones criteria at that time, they said that you will be over-diagnosing. But friends, you believe me, ECHO is the one which helps us to make a precise diagnosis. And as a result, there is neither over-diagnosis or over-diagnosis. In fact, we can tell whether it is a rheumatic or non-rheumatic by looking at it. So here you can see that this is the dilated cardiomyopathy with the central jet. Though there is a pathological mitral regurgitation, you can see that no valves are damaged. And this is a dilated cardiomyopathy because the valves are normal. So this is how the echo uh, in 2015 made circulation. They have included the echo as the major criteria. And two of my papers have been cited. And today, ECHO can detect the mechanism of mitral regurgitation, whether it is valvulitis, thickening, mitral valve prolapse, ventricular enlargement, caudal tear, and all of them cannot be made out clinically, but the ECHO can make out. And here you can see that there is a thickening beaded appearance, not only of the valves, but also the submitral structures, the caudate tendine, as well as the papillary head. They have the nodularity, and this you can see only in India. And the thickening is so much, even the Parks textbook has quoted my work, and then this is how the valves look. 
in our country. Whether it is a myxomatous valve with the mitral valve prolapse, where the echo score will be only 4, or the rheumatic with the pericardial effusion where the echo score is 10. So I was the first one to come out with the echo criteria, that is the Vigia's echo criteria, which was precise to make the diagnosis. As small as 3 years old child, in the past they were making the diagnosis as uh, non-rheumatic or it was a congenital, but here you can see that there is a thickening, there is a submitral structures are thickened, and all the pointers for rheumatic carditis are there in this, and though the child is only three years, this is a rheumatic. So this is how the diagnosis can be made precisely. And this patient was put on penicillin prophylaxis, 11 years old girl, and she was made the diagnosis of mitral regurgitation. Of course, there is a pathological mitral regurgitation, but what you have to see is the endocardial glistening endocardium. And once you have the glistening endocardium, it cannot be rheumatic because in the rheumatic, it's only the valves and not the myocardium. And this glistening endocardium indicates ischemia, and this patient happened to have uh, alkapa and alkapa was the one which was causing the MR and not the rheumatic. So this is how a precise diagnosis can be made. And we have uh, all the eight pointers, the 16, and with this we can make a precise diagnosis whether the caudal tear is there. And in the past, any child not responding to the drugs they used to put them on the steroids because the child is not responding. But today, ECHO can tell that in this patient, even if you had to immerse in the drum of steroids, the child is not going to improve because he has got a tear of both the AML as well as the PML. So with this caudal tear, the patient has to go for the valve repair or the replacement if the repair cannot be done. So the presence of carditis is a reason for lifelong uh, prophylaxis. And today, even subclinical carditis can be treated Treated. In the past, they were taught all the patients coming with mitral stenosis or rheumatic heart disease, they used to say 50% do not have the past history. That 50% we were missing the diagnosis and today echo has been made as a major criteria and all the screening of the school can be done and the juvenile mitral stenosis which is a challenging thing in our country which is a malignant mitral stenosis and in this you know the echo plays a major role not only in assessing the valve and also the post uh, balloon valve plasty and look at this child just two years three months old nobody will ever imagine that it could be rheumatic but echo shows that it has got a tricuspid stenosis as well as the mitral stenosis so the Orifice is only 0.4, and here you can see that echo is the one which gives us to uh, uh, score, echo score, so that we can predict whether this child is going to improve after the balloon mitral valvotomy or not. So the echo has uh, increase its frontier, not only from diagnosis point, even from the management point and the risk stratification, all that can be done with the echo. And apart from that, we can look at the commissures, we can see how the valves are, how the valve is going to uh, improve. It's not moving. And look at this, the patient has got a small LV and the uh, submitral structures are fused so much that both the papillary muscles, uh, they appear like a single papillary muscle and this is the child who is going to, likely to develop the mitral regurgitation, likely that, uh, that this patient will not do well. So here you can see that after the balloon valve plasty, the patient has developed the severe MR, so whether it is the uh, mitral valve tear or it is from the commissure over spitting, all that can be made out by the echo. And uh, once we see the function, we can also see that as small as 0.2 square centimeter, the extended profile of the balloon is 0.4 square centimeter. You can imagine how difficult it is for us to enter this small orifice to open up. And this is the problem with the juvenile mitral stenosis in our country, but still we can give a better lease of life to them thanks to the echocardiography where we can assess and decide what has to be done. So this is another patient from 0.3, it went on to 0.6, and then we can make out how much is the calcification, how much is the commissural fusion, and what is the likely to happen, all that can be assessed by the echocardiography. Apart from that, uh, we can also see whether the complications have occurred, whether the pericardial tamponade has occurred, whatever the complications of the balloon valve plasty, 
all can be made out and the uh, morphology echo scoring can be done. And during the procedure, <clears throat> here you can see that the balloon is caught in the cordae and it is not able to open and that's how the balloon is deformed. If the balloon is deformed like this, the echo can tell that it is in the cordae and not to inflate the balloon, otherwise it will tear the cordae and will have a severe AR. <coughs> So apart from this, you can see that here the patient has come with breathlessness and this is the giant left atrium and this giant left atrium with the eccentric mitral regurgitation, this patient has to go for surgery and especially the plication has to be done to reduce the size of the LA so, uh, so that the atrial fibrillation and the maze procedure is done to <clears throat> prevent this. And apart from that, whether it's a torn cordae or whether there are vegetations, all that can be made out by the echocardiography and so precisely the echo that we can literally see the, uh, what exactly is the prognosis and what management has to be done. And this is another patient who has got a severe dilatation of the left ventricle, clinically diagnosis of MR, AR was done and with such severe AR, we were wondering what it is, but it is a rheumatic because the valve thickening is there, epical four chamber shows the aortic valve thickening and this patient has to go for the double valve replacement. And the new frontier is in the past, the women with pregnancy with rheumatic heart disease, during the delivery they used to die and they used to blame the children, the child which is uh, born. But today we can see that even as an emergency, this patient came with the hemoptysis half a liter per day and the orifice was 0.4 square centimeter and we did the balloon valvotomy as an emergency in a pulmonary edema patient in the morning and evening she developed the labor pains and she delivered and next day she's alive. Though she's sweating, she's alive for the child. So in pregnancy, we can cover the abdomen and without doing the screening, we can do under the echocardiography, so the balloon valvoplasty and the, under the uh, echocardiographic uh, thing, the whole procedure can be done and this is how, you know, without any radiation to the mother or the fetus, we can get an excellent result. So this is the 38 years old patient uh, whom uh, I, it was, I came for the mitral stenosis for balloon valvoplasty. The echo did not show, the transthoracic echo did not show, but look at that, the transesophageal echo, you feel that there is something like a coming like a flower and that is not a flower and it's not a good sign and what exactly is the, it is the thrombus in the left atrial appendage which is partially organized and partially uh, not organized and this is the one which is high risk for the balloon valvoplasty and this patient cannot be taken for that. You can see that though it is attached in the uh, left atrial appendage, there is a sac and all this even over the guide wire, if by chance, if our uh, needle uh, punctures this, the whole of the thrombi inside this uh, uh, thrombus can get embolized and the patient can have a very dense uh, uh, paralysis. So all this TE as well as uh, detecting the thrombus in the left atrial or whether it is in the body, all of them can be made out by the echo Apart from that, whether there's a ball wall thrombus and if this patient was very sick, this goes for the OMV where the thrombus has to be removed and this patient definitely cannot be taken for the intervention. So here the sec itself says that there is a stasis and whenever the sec is there and the thrombus is uh, exclusively within the uh, LA uh, uh, body, that is the appendage, this patient over the guide wire we can do without going towards the appendage we can do the balloon dilatation. So whether it is the organized clost, whether it is partially organized, whether it is protruding into that, or whether the thrombus is on the intraatrial septum where we are going to puncture, all that information we get by the echocardiography. So if it is like a ball wall, like a football moving like this, the, we are definitely not going to do the balloon. This patient goes for the surgery. And apart from this, today, uh, Apart from the ball wall thrombus or the layered thrombus, what we can, what the new frontier that we have is the 3D echocardiography. 3D echocardiography has come as a boon, not only to understand the morphology for the balloon valvoplasty and also for the valve repair. So today the success rate of the valve repair has increased thanks to the 3D echo. We can see the commissure and here you can see that 
post balloon valve plastic there is a AML tear is there. So this AML tear is an acute MR that patient is going to have a pulmonary edema and this patient has to be shifted to the OR for the early repair. So the 3D echo has made the surgeons as well as the cardiologists, interventional cardiologist life so much easier and as on today echo in rheumatic heart disease has crossed all the new frontiers and patients with the carditis are more likely to be detected during the first attack and detecting the subclinical carditis will make the the whole uh, 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 thing to be changed and the more relaxed uh, secondary prophylaxis can be prevented and there is a significant prognostic implication of finding a normal heart on finding unrelated causes of MR where unnecessarily will be giving a penicillin prophylaxis all that can be avoided to conclude Echo is the key technique used to confirm the quality and monitor the rheumatic heart disease. The valve analysis should be integrated and assessment of the etiology, lesion, process and the type of the dysfunction all can be assessed. A comprehensive evaluation of the stenotic and the regurgitant lesions of mitral, aortic and the tricuspid valve because the post-surgical or the post-valvotomy, if the tricuspid valve organic lesion is there, the morbidity and mortality will be very high and exercise and dobutamine echo, 3D echo at sometimes are needed for the risk stratification. Uh, friends, uh, children may be victims of fate, let them not be victims of our neglect and this is what John F. Kennedy said, in India unfortunately children are the victims of their fate but echocardiography has made our life and the life of the children and in the future we are going to detect more and more children and bring them in the net of secondary prophylaxis and give them a better quality of life and thank you very much for your kind and patient hearing. Thank you, sir. I think that was a great uh, lecture and uh, I think it's a matter of great pride for all the Indian adult and pediatric cardiologists as well, actually as for the whole India that uh, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi's criteria for rheumatic heart disease, rheumatic fever, really have been accepted internationally. So let's give her a big hand. Okay. They, they should have been accepted long ago, but apparently they got accepted last year, right? This year or <laughs> yes, last sir. year? Thank you. I think, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, in the American Heart Association, Chicago, Vijay Lakshmi was there, and she was labeled as a queen of rheumatic heart disease. I don't know why they labeled a queen of rheumatic heart disease uh, that's because she the published the first book South Africa, in sir. the criteria South Africa. I think uh, we should feel very proud Thanks, that we have one person after Dr. Padmavati who had a tremendous contribution in the prevalence of coronary artery disease and the evaluation of coronary artery disease in bringing new criteria. And I think more and more work can be done so that we can intervene our patients better. She is a perfect interventional cardiologist in pediatric age group. So I'm sure this is going to be a, invoke a lot of uh, uh, ideas in the years to come. And this oration on the name of none other than our own Namin Sinanda, the pioneer or the world father of echocardiography is bestowed upon uh, Vijay Lakshmi. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yeah, Chopra. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to once again congratulate Professor Vijay Lakshmi on being conferred Professor Navin Nanda oration. We'd like to thank our chairpersons.